Hey everyone, Shadow here, and welcome to another Marvel Contest of Champions video. So I didn't live stream the Shang-Chi Close Quarters uh, challenge, but I did record the final fight. All right, so I'm going to walk you through this fight. And after this fight, I'm going to talk about the challenge, how I felt uh, the challenge was uh, done and give you some tips and my strategy for getting through this challenge. Now, this set of nodes was very annoying to me, all right? I had already done all three of these paths. I was tired, even though this didn't actually take me that long. It took me under an hour to get everything done, but I was ready for it to be done. And although I read the nodes, I don't do very well with these sets of nodes. So that first death was because I did not uh, deal with the special delivery node properly. Go back, read the node, make sure you understand how that node works. Uh, and you basically want to fire specials. Well, that's always a problem for me because I'm running suicides. And I have somewhat trained myself not to fire a lot of specials or else I'll take recoil damage. So I tend to build up and then fire like one special that I know is gonna end the fight so I can avoid the recoil damage. The other issue is the encroaching stun. All right, and you're gonna see I mismanaged the encroaching stun a few times, okay? And I got it towards the end. Now I'm throwing my champions in here just because I want to try and get used to the fight. You know, I don't think any of them uh, are going to be uh, highly effective. They were there mainly for synergies, but any damage that I could do, why not? You know, but mainly I was trying to uh, get a feel and, and get into the rhythm of the fight. And as you can see, I'm still dying uh, to uh, the node, basically. I'm not getting defeated by. Shang-Chi, I'm getting defeated by the node, all right? Um, but I wanted to use them, and then I'll come in with uh, the champs that I feel will be able to uh, finish this fight off for me, all right? So we don't even have him uh, down 30%, all right? But as you can see here, I'm getting into the habit of firing my special. But you also have to worry about the other node, this is just a really bad set of nodes for you, uh, where if you are too far away for too long, you just start degening for no reason, okay? See, look at this, boom, dead. Was too far away from him for too long. So there's a lot to manage here, okay? Um, and honestly, Corvus cuts through all of that, all right? Now, you see, I didn't have any of the uh, team revives, uh, I use those on the path because I never use them. I had those revives. I actually had one expire on me the day before I did this. I just never use them. Uh, and I'll talk more about that after the fight, all right? But Corvus is a great option because that degen, he's not gonna die from it. Um, you also have invade, so hitting into the block does a lot of damage, so you wanna do that. You can see the damage I'm doing. However, the the caveat is if you hit into the block too much, you're not gonna have enough power for a special. Look at that, boom, dead. So I'm hitting into the block just like I've been doing all during the fights, but in this fight, what you wanna do is build up and have a special one ready then you can hit into the block and do whatever and watch that encroaching stun timer. Otherwise, what just happened to me will happen to you. Okay, so I learned that and you can see here, I'm going in and I got a special one now, all right? And I'm watching that, see the degen, but I don't care. Uh, that's from the special delivery, but with Corvus, I don't care, all right? And then here we go, look at this. That happened because I was too busy looking up at the timer. I really hate encroaching stun, all right? And so I took my eyes off of him. 
I'm looking at the time. I'm like, okay, I need to throw a special. And that's when he just started tagging me. And then it was done. Okay. So I was just like, oh my goodness. Now, uh, and I'll, and like I said, I'll talk about it more later, but most of the level one revives, I used five in total. You're seeing most of them here. This is where I use them. Okay. And I was just like, oh man. All right. So let's just get them down. Look at this. See, I'm, I'm waiting out that timer, you know, parry waiting the timer out. All right, there we go. Boom. Finally, I was able to fire off my special and avoid that. But now see, look at here. This confused me. Where are my charges? Where, where do you see the icon? It's gone. How many charges do I have left? All right. I got so confused because it did that before on me and really confused me. All right. So, but we got him down and we didn't have to use a ton of uh, revives on him. So all in all, a good run. All right. And uh, you can see here, I, I don't know why they did this. I'm assuming that they just copied it over from another template, uh, but the completion rewards and the exploration rewards, you can't complete it without exploring it. So there's only one real set of rewards, but I have a feeling that's what they did. All right, now I'm looking over here to see which one I want, right? And you see that mutant? That would normally be my go-to, but look, I have three. I'm already capped out on that. So I'm like, hmm, maybe not do mutant. And I'm saying, okay, cosmic, one day I'll get um, Hercules perhaps. Uh, and those are the juicy prizes. All right, um, loving it. And by now you've already seen the opening that I did with those uh, shards. I, I was able to open up three six stars. So let me talk to you a little bit about the Shang-Chi challenge. Now with the Summer of Pain finale still fresh in my mind, I was not looking to do any more difficult content. So I watched many, many YouTubers doing this challenge and I'm just like, oh my goodness, I don't know if I want to do this. My, my stash is not speaking to me. It's hurt and it is not speaking to me right now. And I was not looking to use up even more resources. So I formulated a strategy after looking over, you know, quite a few different runs. And so I'm going to give you the benefit of what I found. All right. Now for me and the team that I used, and it worked out great for me, is Corvus, Aegon, Guardian, Wolverine, yes, Guardian and Wolverine, and Proxima, okay? Now, a little bit about that team. Corvus can do every single fight in here, okay? Let's be clear. So if you wanna go that route, you can just have the supporting team swap out Aegon for someone else. Some people use Doc Strange for the extra attack. Some people choose White Magneto. Um, but, you know, you can choose whoever else. You could choose Hercules to help you out uh, with the uh, Shang-Chi boss. You don't have to worry about that encroaching stunt. All right. Um, so you have a lot of options. But I went with that team uh, primarily because I wanted two guns. Even though Corvus could take every fight, I wanted another option so that I would save resources. So if my Corvus failed and all I, if I brought in a team and Corvus was who I was going to use for every fight and Corvus dies, I have to now use a revive. I have to because I brought only synergies in. But with Aegon on the team, I didn't have to do that. I could use Corvus. If he fell, then I could use Aegon, finish it up. Okay. That saved me a lot of revives. Uh, now I used seven level, what was it? Level two team revives, but they were just for, you know, Aegon and uh, Corvus for the most part, but I did throw in the others just to chip away, you know, may as well. 
Uh, I didn't use those um, team revives very often. And then I used five level one revives. Okay. So, you know, you, you could say that I used 12, 12 uh, revives because the team revives didn't really do all that much, to be honest, but that chip damage did make things a little bit uh, easier uh, to clean up. Okay. So my strategy is this. I ramped up Aegon first. All right. So on that first She-Hulk fight, I ramped up Aegon. I went in, I restarted a few times and what I found, and I ran suicides, by the way, I did not turn my suicides off for this. Uh, what I found was that if I did not use special ones, I didn't have a high combo count uh, after that fight. I actually got the solo a couple of times with like 80 hits uh, of, you know, Aegon. So what I did was I said, you know what? I know I'm going to use revives. So I'm going to invest some revives in ramping Aegon up. This is something that I wish I had done during the gauntlet. Okay. So that first fight, I got the solo. I used special one spamming it. And I ended up with, I think, 170 uh, something combo. All right. And so we were able to bank. Uh, a nice big combo for him. Uh, for Sunspot, I the first Sunspot, uh, I used Corvus. And I just hit into the block. That is the basic strategy when you're using uh, either of them, really, is to hit into the block because Invade is on everyone. And so you're doing a lot of damage. And when you ramp Aegon up, uh, and it doesn't take much, you can hit into the block and you'll crit just like you do with Corvus. So hitting into the block was the basic strategy. Okay. Then you've got hit monkey. And I thought hit monkey was going to be a big problem, but uh, that first hit monkey, I chose instead of getting the charge, the evade charge for Corvus, I ramped up Aegon. Now that's something that I didn't see a lot of people doing. I saw, even those that brought out the team, they would uh, use the this, this similar team as I did. Uh, they would bring out Corvus to get the evade charge. But that protection from Hit Monkey is a great way to ramp up Aegon. So I ramped up Aegon a ton on that first Hit Monkey. Okay. Now, uh, the Guardian and Wolverine synergy. What that synergy does is it gives you uh, three perfect blocks. So you take no damage. That is huge. That synergy saved me revives. There were times when I dashed back and it read as a parry. Has that happened to you? Well, if it happens to you in this challenge, you're gonna be taking a lot of damage. And if you're using Corvus, and he has uh, low charges, he's at 1%, which he's gonna be for most of this run, unless you heal him up, which you don't have to do, uh, you're gonna be losing a lot of charges, okay? So with that, you can have three free parries, basically. So what I did with Aegon, and I actually did, um, I believe I got the solo on that uh, first hit monkey, what I did was I just basically was trying to ramp up. That's all I cared about, ramping up, ramping up, ramping up. And every once in a while, if he fired a heavy, I would fire my heavy. Now, the Proxima Synergy means that I can take a hit and I'll activate Combo Shield with Aegon. It also means that I'll get True Strike with Corvus. So after I do get the Evade Charge, I won't have to worry about Evades after that, okay? So that's why Proxima uh, is recommended uh, to be brought, all right? So for that first hit monkey, if he fired a heavy, I would counter with my heavy and then do some damage. Uh, but once I got a nice high combo and I was ready to, to take him down, I had three parries, as long as you didn't mess up and parry by accident. So 
what I would do, parry, heavy, just like you would normally do. And I would bait out a special one first. Parry, heavy, knock him down, go to work. And with Aegon ramped up, he's doing a lot of damage into the block or not into the block. Okay? He's doing crazy amounts of damage. Aegon made the run go much faster and smoother. He was actually faster than Corvus. Okay? So that's what I did for those fights. Now, Mr. Negative, I use revives on Mr. Negative because I don't know how to evade his special one. Uh, I would recommend you practice, do some duels, and learn the special one. I did get better at it as the, um, you know, as I did uh, more paths, but I think I ended up using probably one revive per Mr. Negative. Now, one thing that I will say about Mr. Negative, and I didn't understand this at first, if you are hitting into the block, don't parry, but if you're hitting into his block, his special will not be reversed controls that messed me up because i was hitting into his block and i was ready for reverse controls and it didn't get reversed okay i don't know that much about mr negative so that was a learning experience so you have to be careful now if you know you've parried or whatever then you got to be ready for the reverse controls it's really annoying it's really really annoying um but we got it done now tigra I got a tip for you on Tigra, all right? Um, and I saw this happen to several YouTubers, and it happened to me as well. We would hit her, do our full five-hit combo, and then we would dash back, and she would fire her special one and catch us, okay? So how to avoid that, do not finish your five-hit combo when she has a special one. Don't do it because she is crazy aggressive most of the time in this challenge. And if you finish your five hit combo, you're not going to be able to react or, or um, the game doesn't even let you recover fast enough to avoid that special one of hers. Now, some uh, champions might be able to do it. I don't know. But if I try to do a five hit combo, and dash back, and she fired her special one, I never was able to get away in time. You know? And I mean, I'm dashing twice, three times. Didn't matter. I would always get caught before I could get away. But once I did, you know, like, three hit, dash back, four hit, dash back, that worked because when you're doing that, she's the one that's recovering. And you have time to dash, dash, and evade that special one. OK, so that is how I tackled that um, Shang-Chi challenge. Now, about the teams, I've seen some different teams uh, going around, uh, some other suggestions. OK, so Hercules is a good option if you want to swap him in for someone. Uh, but what I would recommend is of course the team that I went with because those free parries were lifesavers. Not only that, but Guardian gives you some extra uh, block proficiency. Um, I've saw, I've seen people recommend Heimdall to be added. I don't recommend Heimdall because of the way uh, the immortality and how it procs. Um, Heimdall, how Heimdall's um, intervention, I guess, uh, triggers. So with Corvus, he can't die if he has charges, right? However, at 1%, it still triggered Heimdall's um, life save, which meant it's not helping with Corvus. It'll help with other champions, but with Corvus, if you choose to use Corvus, Heimdall is useless. He's absolutely useless. So I don't recommend bringing him in if you plan on using Corvus uh, primarily. Uh, and uh, I also saw, you know, Doc Strange. I mentioned him earlier. He is a good option 
I don't really now I was running suicides and I did put in a, a 20% boost as well. I don't really see the need for him. White Magneto don't really see the need for him. People bring him in uh, also, I think, for the extra attack and the pre-fight um, to make Hit Monkey easier. But I had no problems with Hit Monkey. The the Guardian Wolverine synergy that worked great for me for that Hit Monkey. Okay, because it allowed me to parry heavy three times, and that was usually all I needed to take him down. Okay, uh, but there are other options that you can uh, bring in if you have the skill and you don't have Corvus or Aegon, you can go in with like Hercules. Um, Killmonger uh, is also an option. Uh, there are some, uh, I think Barrow uh, has a, a video where he used just Killmonger. Now remember, he's skilled. So you may not be able to use Killmonger uh, the way that he did, but it is an option, okay? And you can watch him and, and get some pointers on how you need to uh, fight with Killmonger. Uh, but uh, all in all, I did not find this challenge that difficult. I actually was afraid it was going to be crazy difficult. But it wasn't too difficult. I am not a fan, though, of the design that they did. Those nodes and, and everything. It seems like this was designed to drain your resources. And after the Summer of Pain finale and with the current ongoing parry control issues that already drained our resources, this was not welcome. And the rewards, the rewards, they're, they're, they're okay. But for what they did, I, I don't see it. If I didn't have Corvus or Aegon, this would have been much more expensive for me. Much more. I didn't use any I uh, I didn't use any um units but if I didn't have Corvus or he wasn't awakened and I don't recommend using Corvus unawakened in this challenge but if I had not had them I would have spent way more revives. It would have easily been I would say as far as items go if I didn't have the right champions, I would have spent as many revives as I did on the final path, the Mysterio Rogue path in the Summer of Pain finale. And I believe I spent a good 25 to 30 revives on that path. So this could have been really, really bad. So don't feel bad if you don't have the, the right counters and you're seeing that it's rough, yeah, it's going to be really rough. I didn't find it that way because I had the right counters for this challenge. All right? So uh, anyway, that's going to do it, guys. Hopefully this helps you out uh, when you decide to do the Shang-Chi challenge, or maybe you might decide not to do it. Uh, I've also seen, by the way, Ghost. Uh, True Focus uh, I've seen people say True Focus stops Quake and Ghost. Um, it hinders them. It doesn't really stop them. It may stop Quake. I don't know too much about um, how she interacts with the True Focus because I don't use her. Um, I don't know whether you can use Quake, but just in a different way than you normally would. But that's the case with Ghost. You can still use Ghost for this challenge. But, uh, and again, uh, I think Biro has some uh, videos that show different alternatives for doing this challenge. And he is skilled, so keep that in mind. Um, but Ghost can do it. You just have to fight in a different way. You know, you can't rely on phasing their attacks and attacking, you know, because of the true focus. Uh, but anyway, that's going to do it. Thank you all for watching the video. Hopefully this helped you guys out. Uh, take care and you all have a blessed day.